Today we're going to take a look at speed density or volumetric efficiency tuning on the third gen uh, GM platform, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and we're doing another video series on third generation uh, ECM tuning. I've got a couple new ones that I put out recently that just kind of condenses it down into really short videos. We talked about uh, just kind of general setup, how to do your as found, uh, how to, uh, you know, set up your data logger and things like that. And then on top of it, we did mass airflow in the previous video. So uh, I'll try and throw a link up in the corner to one of those videos. But as always, you can go to tuning101.com, which is our YouTube homepage. We'll take you right there uh, and then click on playlist and look underneath Gen 3 tuning and you'll find those videos along with a lot of other videos on Gen 3 specific tuning. So uh, I just kind of wanted to do an update to this series and as we get into this thing we've got a couple things. Uh, for one uh, you can go over to goatropegarage.com and buy our scanner layout and channels. Uh, it kind of streamlines it but if you watch that first video I did uh, I also go through how you set these things up individually for your setup. So let's take a look at it. We've got our mass airflow, our final, we would call it. Uh, and now we need to go over and get it set up for volumetric efficiency or speed density tuning. Interchangeable there. You'll hear me called both things, SD, VE. Just know that we're talking about volumetric efficiency. So the big things is here, we need to go ahead and invert our dynamic settings. Originally, we came in here and changed this down to force this into what we call high speed mode all the time for mass airflow uh, tuning. We're basically going to do the opposite on this case. We're going to max this stuff out. So we can take this up to 12,000. Remember, this is a hysteresis on this. So it basically says anything below 11,900 is going to be using uh, volumetric efficiency. And then on the same ordeal, we can bump our steady state up to 12,000. And then our high low map threshold, will take it up to 104. Uh, the big thing, all the other stuff that we've done as far as setting up the fuel and things like that for the mass airflow stays the same, but we do need to fault the mass airflow sensor. And to do that, we'll go under engine diagnostics, airflow, and then we're going to set this mass airflow frequency fail high. I normally set it to like one. And this is the P0103. If you mouse over it, it will show you down there the DTC. It's always a good idea to come into your DTC list, find that P0103 and set this to error on first error. And that way, as soon as you turn it on the first time and it faults the mass airflow sensor, you're gonna get a check engine light, but you want that check engine light. That lets you know that it is not taking any readings from the mass airflow sensor. So now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and save this one. This is gonna be speed density, uh, step one. And we'll go out and log. So if we pull over our logs, I've got a log loaded up here. Man, this one was rich. Look at all that green in there. Uh, so we're doing this one based off of uh, EQ ratio because we have an AEM uh, being brought in on serial. No, actually, this one's being brought in on a MPVI2 analog, and but we are bringing it in as a lambda reading. It's very important that you bring it in uh, as you see it on the gauge. If you're showing lambda on the gauge, you want it to bring in as lambda on here. If you're showing AFR, the same. And then we need to make sure that we have the correct commanded uh, parameter that goes with it. In this case, it'd be equivalence ratio commanded. If you were doing AFR, you would have fuel ratio commanded instead. Using our math though, look at this, look how rich this is. And so whenever we're this rich, I'm going to go ahead and scrub through here. And what I'm looking for is kind of the low point. We got a 16.7 uh, and that looks to be pretty low. So, well, down there's a 12.7, but I would probably ignore that one and just focus on the 16.7. So what I want to do is I want to shift this whole table down. So we'll come back in to our tune. Let's go underneath engine, airflow, and general, and open up our primary VE table. Big thing, we want to double check our columns and rows. Make sure that it matches up. There's nothing worse than trying to tune whenever those don't match. And so we're going from 400 to 8,000, 400. And if we scroll over, all the way up to 8,000. And then we're... 15 to 105 on 5 kPa uh, separators there. So 15 to 105. So it does match up. We can apply those changes from our graph. Now, we could do a couple different things. We could just copy and paste this thing over, but we're gonna have a lot of data over here that we're not touching on yet. Since we know that we're rich across the board for the most part, I'm going to shift this whole table down 15%. So we'll highlight this thing, get everything loaded up there. And to do a shift down 15%, I know that I'm going to, to multiply this by a decimal, and uh, that would be 
85. So if I multiply this by 85.85, it's going to take 15% out of the entire table. And it's shifted the table down. So we're still utilizing the stock speed density table. We've moved it down. We can now load this one up. We'll save it as speed density step two. Load this thing up and we can go out and grab a log. Okay, so we've gone out, we've grabbed a log. Some stuff's getting a little bit goofy in here, but you can see the, the meat and potatoes of it in here is starting to fall in line and we need to focus on some of the outside stuff. But since we have so much shifting one way or the other, this is gonna be a prime example of, I'm probably gonna go in, we're gonna select the whole thing. We'll copy this one over and I'm gonna use the multiply by half uh, percentage to just kind of massage everything into place. Now. You can't see the changes because I didn't say that, but let's just close this out and I'll reopen it real quick so you can see as I apply this. Pay special, multiply by half. We can see the cells that we've adjusted. The ones that are blue have gone down. The ones that are red have come up. And we're getting a little bumpy out there and then we've got a couple spots where the data is not loaded up. And we can use a couple different tools in here, mainly interpolation or smoothing. And there's two different approaches. We could approach it this way and I like to do it on the RPM axis, a, a lot of times. So if your RPMs are going across the top in columns, I like to go and do the corrections through the columns, but we can also verify it by going horizontally. So if I'm going to come in here and interpolate between those two points, it did shift that one down. Now, if I were to do it this way, it gives us a little bit lower reading and I'll look at those two things and say, uh, I don't know, I think I might prefer it this way for the next one because we're at 59 and it brings us to 60, 62 to 63, as opposed to Horizontally, we're at 59, 59, 60, 63. So I think it makes more sense to try it this way. Uh, same ordeal out here. We have this lone 70 out here that gives me an indication that this is probably too high down through here. And so we can come through here and I'm actually going to smooth this to bring those numbers in line. And then I might do the same thing up a little bit to smooth this to bring those numbers in line. A couple clicks there just makes a little bit better transition and then maybe one right there. We'll come down here, look at this area. This is actually not too bad, except we've got two 66s. If we smooth this once, one's going to drop down, the other one's going to go up. That makes a smooth transition there. And then what I might do is look at it as a hole here at the end. And if I see a lot of ridges in here still, I might kick the whole thing over and smooth the entire selection. That looks a lot better. Now, whenever you do this, remember, if you smooth this, the next time you go in, there's a good chance that you're going to have some spots that are going to read higher errors than previously. But the idea is to get all of these changes to start to fall in line while keeping a somewhat sane uh, volumetric efficiency table. Because where there is a ridge that shifts through here, there is data that has to be interpolated between those points. So if we're going from 4,800 to 5,200, we've got a 74 down to a 72. It's changing at 4,900. It is, you know, 20 or 75% this cell, 25% that cell. At 5,000, it's 50 50 between those, and then so forth. And so it's actually moving, and you'll hit what would be considered a volumetric efficiency of 73 whenever you're at 5,000 between those two cells at 50 kPa. So keep that in mind because if you have a big spike in here somewhere, let's just grab one and jerk it up there, 76 to 68, then it's having to do a lot more interpretation uh, between those two cells as it moves from 2400 towards 2800. And that can cause a lot of drivability issues, stumbles, things like that, that you might be feeling. So we want to make sure and keep those spikes out of there. We'll get rid of that one. And then we'll go ahead and save this as our step three. Okay, so we're on step 20, in fact, to getting this, which is taking a lot more than normal. But there's a couple of things that we want to look at specifically on this log. And it's around this 800 RPM zone where we're showing a lot of lean stuff down here that may not be truly lean. And it could be a transit issue where uh, we're seeing data that's not being accurately represented. Uh, another thing, this one has a low idle on it, which is probably causing us some issues on top of it. So the idle would have to be corrected on this. But if we scroll through here manually and kind of look at how this works out, we're expecting this. So we are running lean right there at 594, which I don't like to see. But as soon as we get back into normal fueling here, it drops right back into where we want to see. So we do have a trouble area here that we would still need to address. But... 
what I would want to address in this case is this 382 RPM idle. So we would need to go back and look at things like idle air control based on whether or not this has an electronic throttle or if it has a screw with an IAC valve on it. Most likely our base running airflow tables are too low and we would need to bring these up. So with volumetric efficiency, there is really a strong rinse and repeat approach to this. We need to go out and get a lot of data logs and you have to do a bunch of varied driving styles to try and fill that graph out. The more data you get into that graph, the more accurate results that you're going to get while populating those changes to your speed density table. Just like everything else though, mass airflow, things like that, we want to make sure and start working up. Uh, don't go straight out and do wide open throttle rips on this thing. You want to go up to, you know, 2,500 RPMs, get that lower section kind of dialed in, go up to maybe 4,000 RPMs, then up to wide open throttle. Now, the thing about it is whenever we go back into dynamic airflow after getting the volumetric efficiency dialed in, we're going to cross over that shutoff that we looked at in the settings and it's going to go back into high speed and rely predominantly on the mass airflow sensor. So if we were to come in here and look at this table, uh, underneath our airflow and our VE table, based on where our changeover is, say we have it set to 2800 RPMs, from this point on, we're going to be relying on the mass airflow sensor. It's still going to reference the volumetric efficiency table, but the fueling will predominantly be done for mass airflow. Now, if the mass airflow fails, it's going to fall back to this table. So what I like to actually do is come into this area in the wide open throttle, and I like to get this conservatively rich. And I'm saying maybe 5% rich across the board whenever I'm pulling a log. That way, if something does happen and we do have to revert back to this table, we have a nice safe table that'll get us home until we can get our mass airflow sensor replaced. So keep that in mind. Down here, down in the lower RPMs, that's where it is really important to get specific, get down to the details, get that area dialed in because it's very, uh, it will affect how your transient off throttle, you know, uh, from a leave, from a dig, things like that. Whenever you're at idle and you tip into it or you, you, know, you blast the throttle, this is where it is important to have that stuff really spot on dialed in. So keep that in mind. And then as I said, we have a little bit more leniency up here. Now, if you're running speed density only, you don't have a mass airflow sensor, obviously that doesn't apply. You need to have the entire table dialed in and you're just gonna have to take time. But manually scroll through your logs Go through and look at it and look for areas that are not represented properly because there's some latency that you will see on your wideband readings versus commanded sometimes. And you can end up chasing your tail because you can have an area right here where it's showing that it's 7.3 lean and it may not actually be 7.3 lean. What can happen is you can be right here on this cell and you can be commanding 0.1 down here on your EQ and then whenever you get into high throttle, and it actually hits power enrichment and that dives down to our 0 0.85, 0 0.9 in this case. Whenever that changes from this point to this point, there's a good chance that your wideband can read a couple uh, steps behind. And, and I'm not even going to say seconds because it can be less than a second. It can be a few microseconds. But that latency between the reading that it's showing you uh, can cause you to get red cells in here that are not necessarily correct. So go through, check that, make sure that you're not getting some of that false data in there that's going to skew your VE table. Okay, that wraps up our quick refresh on volumetric efficiency. As always, if you have any questions, post up the comments down below. Check the description, links, good links down there, a lot of information. Check out the websites. Uh, and let me know if you guys are enjoying me kind of rehashing some of these uh, older topics that we've touched on. Uh, so I want to get some of this out to some of the new people out there that may have uh, subscribed later on and, and haven't had a chance to go back and dig through some of the playlists. So hopefully this will help some of you guys out. Remember, there is a lot of information. I've got over 200 videos on the playlist out there on, you know, that are tuning related. So go check those out. But I'm going to wrap it up for now. You know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.